just want to praise you forever and ever and ever for all you've done for me. Blessings and glory and honor, they all belong to you. Thank you, Jesus, for blessing me. It's a testimony. Anybody in here got a story to tell? question comes, how powerful is your story? How real is your story? Second question, are you ashamed to tell your story? You ought to tell it. What they say around the, around the mountain? You ought to just tell it all over the place. And you ought to not be ashamed to tell your story. Your story. It's your testimony. Amen. What you've been through? Somebody help me. Somebody else could not make it. But you made it. Somebody help me in here. Uh, uh, can you hear me? You made it. You ought to tell the world, look what the Lord has done for me. I'm sorry, y'all, but I just feel like testifying this morning. How we used to say that, Sister Riley, could have been there, should have been there, but the Lord. Let me see one more day. But God is good, y'all. When I think about goodness of the Lord and where I've come from Brother Malik like the woman at the well mm. here we go I was seeking things that's not satisfied but then but then
St. John chapter 4. St. John chapter 4. Thank you, Lord God. Verse 5. Then cometh he to a city of Samaria, which is, which is called Sinkar, near to the parcel of the ground that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. Now Jacob's well was there. Jesus, therefore, being weary with his journey, said thus on the well, and it was about the sixth hour. And there coming a woman of Samaria to draw water. And Jesus said unto her, Give me to drink. For his disciples were gone away unto the city to buy meat. That's enough. God bless you. Thank you very kind. I, I just want to talk to you simply about my favorite character in the Bible, Miss Joyce, is the woman at the well. And I want you to notice that they did not name her. Anybody know her name? Nobody knows her name. They, they'll get smart and try to call, say that it was Mary Magdalene. Mary Magdalene was not Samaritan. She was Jewish all the way. But this woman was a Samaritan woman. To give you a little bit of biblical history, uh, the northern and the southern kingdom, the northern kingdom was overrun by the king of Assyria. I think Sister Sims can tell me that's true. And the king of Assyria, what he did is he deported the Jews out of the northern kingdom and brought in people from other nations into that place. They came, so some immigrants came from other parts of the world to Israel, and they mixed with the people, and they were called the Samaritans because they were in Samaria was separated between Samaria and Judah. And Judah was all Jewish, but Samaria was mixed, just like America is. And if some people think America is going to stay like it is with us little, in our little white corner, our little black corners, our little brown corners, that's not true. We're going to mix, because we already are a mixed nation. Yeah. They, they don't use the word mixed and use the word diversity. But we are already a nation of diversity. But we are a mixed nation, nation. And because the Samaritans were not pure Jewish, the Jews could not stand them. Even Jesus himself, when he met the woman who had the possessed daughter, I think I said, I think it's in the message, is, uh, uh, he called, uh, uh, called them a dog. Because that's the term that the Jews would use for the Samaritans. There were two Samaritans that she talks about in the Bible, and that's the woman at the well and the good Samaritan. And I want you to notice the way in the Bible it talks about a bad Samaritan. But yet the Jews hold them as bad people. They would not talk to them. But here, I want to tell you about the woman at the well. She is a fascinating character in the Bible. She's fascinating because she had an encounter with Jesus Christ. And watch this. She had the longest encounter with the Messiah than any other individual with Jesus. That's the way Jesus is. The people that you discount, the ones that you push aside, is the ones that means more to him. Amen? I don't know if y'all count that. You got to be careful how you treat people. And nobody better than anybody else. Yeah. Amen, somebody? Listen to what God says. God has no respecter of person. That means everybody is the same for him. Can I, can I go scriptorial on you? For God so loved the world that what, what he did? He gave his only begotten son, not just for certain kind of people, but he died for everybody. This woman at the well is such a, a mighty powerful character. She was representing the lows of the low. Uh -huh. A female in the society where women were dis demeaning and disregarded. Yes, a race of people that were despised by the Jews. Right. Living in, in shame as a social outcast. Mm -hmm. 
she not only had a holy encounter with Christ, but she also got something that a lot of people wish they had. She got eternal salvation. Amen. Wasn't worth nothing. Wasn't nobody until she met Jesus. And she got salvation. And if I make you think about the sermon last week, I forgot to mention to you that the man did not praise God for his sight. But he praised God because he got saved. Read the story to the end of the story. He told Jesus, Jesus said, do you, do, do you know who the Messiah is? He said, no, Lord, show me the Messiah. Right. And he said, it's he that's talking to you now. Right. And the man went away happy because he got eternal life. Yeah. Stop worrying about what you're going to eat. Stop worrying about what you're going to wear. Yeah. But give God glory that you are saved and on your way to heaven. Yeah. We spent too much time praising God for things. But we forget that we got salvation. Oh, yeah. And nobody can take it away, not the devil, not nobody else. God gave it. I got it. Thank you, Lord. And I'm going to keep it. Ain't God all right? But she had this encounter. Watch this. Jesus went to the well. And he was weary. And he sat on the well while his disciples went away to buy meat. And along come this woman in the middle of the day. She came, why was she coming there in the middle of the day? Simply because she wanted to avoid the crowd. Uh -huh. Because she was ashamed of how people talked about her. Right. How they threw away because she had a problem with relationship. Right. Can, I, can I bring it home, y'all? Right. Five husbands right. and living with another one. She must have had problems with relationship. Right. She didn't have problems with men. She had problems with relationship. Not only did she have five husbands and one not married to her, she also didn't have no friends. She didn't, nobody wanted to talk to her. Nobody wanted to hang around her because she had a bad reputation. But she met Jesus. Somebody help me here? All by herself. And when she got to the well, he got the nerve to ask her for a drink of water. And I like the woman of the well because she didn't just took it like it is and said, uh, 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 okay, I'm going to give you what you want. She asked him questions. Right. How are you going to talk to me and I'm a woman uh -huh. and you a man? Uh -huh. How are you going to talk to me and I'm a Samaritan and you a Jew? Uh -huh. How are you going to talk to me and I got a bad reputation and you supposed to be a rabbi? Uh -huh. Amen, somebody? Right. And we got to watch this now, uh, uh, Sister, Sister Keisha, that, that, that we got a habit in society that we disregard women's. We put them down, we misuse them. Oh, so, oh, we got women's in high position. They're still not making the money that men make. Y'all miss that. We got CEOs. Help me, y'all. Women CEOs, but still not making the money that men CEO are making. We are disregarding them. Let me tell you something. They made a mistake. You can disregard some women's if you want to. But baby, don't mess with the sisters. Y'all missed that. Just ask the, the Republicans in the last election when they disregarded black women's vote. And what happened? They got turned around and got turned over. You just, you keep on doing that. There is power hmm, in people that you push away. Because when you push them away, guess who picked them up? The Lord picks them up. Somebody help me here. She asked Jesus some questions. You ought to talk, look, talk to the Lord. Why me, Lord? Ain't nothing wrong with that. Why I'm going through what I'm going through? Ain't nothing wrong with that. Why, Lord, I can't be successful as somebody else? Ain't nothing wrong with that. Ask the Lord some questions. But you better get ready for the answer. You may not act like the answers, amen? Because he's going to tell you just like it is. And let, just like last week, the Lord, why? The man was blind. The Lord told him, what he told him? Go wash. He had to clean himself up before he can receive blessings. Same thing with the woman at the well. She had to be clean. She asked the Lord. She even got, she even got religious with him. She said, y'all say worship over here in Jerusalem, but we said worship in these mountains. Jesus had an answer for her. 
He said, baby, you can talk that talk if you want, but the time gonna come when we shall need to worship in Jerusalem or in this mountain because God has respect for true worshiper. Yeah. And it doesn't matter where you are, who you are. Yeah. God respect a true worshiper. And I say to you, when you approach God, you better be for real. You better, put, you better be for real. You might as well be for real. Because God knows everything. He reads your heart and he can read your mind. He knows your intention. Can I pin a note right there? I got a little job. I'm not even one photo of the way in my sermon. But I can, pin a, can I pin a note? I'm so tired of people coming in the church with their own agenda. If you can tell who they are. If you don't praise them when they pray a powerful prayer, if you don't tell them they sung good, if you don't tell them that they, they was teaching a very good lesson, if you don't give them some, come on y'all, some praises, for the work they do in the church and they just fold their mouth up and walk away. Help me somebody. Something is wrong. It's because that agenda, help me y'all, they did not get what they want. Help me somebody. Let me tell you how you really can get blessed. Don't come in the church full. Come in the church empty. Y'all miss your shout. Let the Lord fill you up. Yeah. Amen, somebody? Yeah. Let the Lord fill you up. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody help me here. Yeah. It's ain't, uh, it, it ain't about you. It's all about the Lord. Yeah. Somebody help me here. Somebody help me here. It's about Jesus. Yeah. You come in here, make it about Jesus. Yeah. Because it's all about him. Yeah. Every word in the book is about him. Somebody help me here. She said Jesus told her true worshiper. And she said, Lord, give me some of that water that you have. Because he told her, you don't know who you're talking to. Because if you realize who you're talking to, I can give you living water. Somebody help me here. No wonder we walking around here like dead people. Because we don't have no living water in her. Somebody help me here. He said, the water that I give you, that's in the word, it lasts forever. Somebody help me here. Once you get that living water, it'll spring up forever. It remind me of the Holy Ghost. If you are not living right, you don't have the Holy Ghost. If you're not saved, you're not, you don't have the Holy Ghost. Somebody help me here. It shows me things that woman at the well has a great story. It shows me that the Lord loves everybody. everybody. That he loves the whole world. Yeah. That God has no respect of person. Amen. If you don't love them, Jesus is going to love them. Amen. If you don't love the homeless people, Jesus will. Amen. And watch this, y'all. Everybody means something to somebody. Amen. But God, God means, everybody means everything to God. I don't, I don't care if you're a woman or a man, if you're gay or straight, the Lord loves you. Amen. Somebody help me here. Amen. I don't have, I'll have no business running you out the church because you're gay. Amen. The Lord accepts you. Amen. But once you come in, help me somebody. Watch what the Lord says. I will give you living water. Amen. And that living water will change you into what I want to be. And let me tell you something. We're so busy putting gay people down. So busy putting transgender people down. But we walking around here with our rotten self. Lying and conniving. You think God happy about that? What makes you better than anybody else? Y'all forgive me? With our adultery self. Pastor, I'm not no adulterer. Yes, you are. Because you look with, come on, y'all. Somebody help me here. If you're not an adulterer, you walking around here with your eyes closed. It, it, she reminds us that only Jesus can give us salvation. Not, 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 not Mohammed, not nobody else, but Jesus can give us 
set, can give us salvation. Amen. And I'm halfway now as I come to a close. Uh -huh. Not only do Jesus love everybody, uh -huh. and not only do he give, he's the only one that can give us salvation. Yeah. Somebody yeah. say in the name of Jesus. Yeah. It's the only way that I can get to God. Somebody help me here? Nowhere else. Thirdly, the, the testimony that you have is very important. Yeah. I'm going to say this about testimony. Look at the first four letters of testimony. T-E-S-T. -E In order for you to have a testimony. Somebody help me here. You got to be tested first. Why I'm going to what I'm going through. Somebody help me here. Why am I so sick sometimes? Why is trouble always coming my way? Somebody help me here. Why is the children, my children never acting right? Why is my relationship so messed up? Well, I stop by to tell you, it's just a test. Hallelujah, somebody. It's just a test. And if you go through the test, whether you pass the test or not, help me somebody, your test will turn to a testimony. Somebody help me here. Look at me. I am a testimony. Ain't God all right? I haven't always been in the Word. And the Word haven't always been in me. But I a testimony. Ain't God all right? Somebody help me here. So whatever you're going through, hang on in there. Ain't God all right? A testimony. She had a testimony. Ain't God all right? God is good. And he's good all the time. Shack up. Somebody help me here. Ain't God all right? Say yeah. She said, come see a man that told me everything that I ever done in my life. Ain't God all right? God is talking to you. Telling you what you did. What you done. Because he wrote it down. Ain't God all gotta face it all. Ain't God all right? Somebody help me here. When I get to help and stand before the judgment seat, ain't God all right? They gonna read my record. Help me somebody. They gonna say, Johnny, you failed the test. Ain't God all right? Reverend Argy, you missed the mark. somebody's life. God, God is not happy with a weak testimony. He wants a powerful testimony. He wants
false people that don't, that, that's not ashamed to say, I'm not all I should be. But thank God, I'm not. What I used to be. Y'all tell your neighbor, if you knew me, when I was in my sin, you wouldn't want to sit with me or even walk in the same building with me. I'm fascinated. I saw something yesterday and I stopped and talked to one of my members. I said, I'm fascinated. I'm fascinated with what God did. I'm not fascinated about the life that changed, but the life that got blessed, but I'm fascinated by what God did. Turn to your neighbor and say, God did it. And he can 